Non-Americans, what region or area of your country gets made fun of the most, or has the craziest news reports? I don't have a good answer for Canada, but do have a great one for Quebec, the Beauce region, where most of Quebec is divided on proud Quebec nationalist and open multiculturalist lines, the Beauce is basically the one corner of the province that for some reason resembles rural Alberta politically. Most of the rest of the province, whatever the background, is confused by them. For Australia, in the past I would have said that Queensland slash the Gold Coast tends to have the most outrageous news stories. But then this news article came out of NSW and I don't know what to think anymore. HTTPS colon slash slash 7 newscomau slash news slash NSW police slash fugitive with beast tattoo on his forehead caught by police after public plea C8532389 HTTPS colon slash slash 7 newscomau slash news slash NSW police slash fugitive with beast tattoo on his forehead caught by police after public plea C8532389. In Spain there's allegedly a place called Murcia. It's supposed to be the most politically to the right place on the country. And it's supposed to have nothing of interest, except for the weirdest slangs and a couple of beaches. It's supposed to be under the Valencian community. And a lot of weird stuff and people exist there. However, as I stated, Murcia does not exist, even if people say to have been born there. And I'm really happy it is not real. In Portugal, a lot of jokes are told about people from Alentejo, a region in the south of the country, but north of the Algarve, where everything and everyone is supposed to be very slow. There is no real correspondence to a Florida man in Portugal, though, we do have a place called Entroncamento, north of Lisbon, where you would find a lot of phenomena, that's the word we use here, but those are mostly huge or very strange vegetables or animals, I'm not even sure if they are real or just myths. Mexican here, I would totally say that in Mexico it has to be Tabasco. The main park of Villahermosa, located in Tabasco and that is the capital, is filled with alligators. So you could go for a run with your dog and end up without a dog or a leg. The government also thought that it was a good idea to have cats in Laguna de las Ilusiones in order to have pest control. Guess who ate the cats? What s something you're so does that s small slash subtle but wildly comforting. She sings while doing house chores, often with her music playing or sometimes a cappella. She can't sing for. She's pitchy and all over the place but that doesn't stop her. As a musician and one with a good ear, it should drive me crazy. Like, hearing someone play a guitar that is slightly out of tune, drives me crazy. But I like hearing her voice. Well watch scary movies on occasions and normally sit together on the couch. But on these type movies she slides so close to me you couldn't get a book in between us plus grabs my hand and arm under the blanket. Very, very romantic for me. She doesn't really realize she is doing it I don't think. She will sometimes just take my hands and massage and play with them. I work very hard with my hands and they're always sore and stiff. She knows this and just tries to ease my pain. Her hands are so warm, soft, cute, and strong. She absolutely melts me when she does that. Just the way she looks up at me with those gorgeous loving eyes as well. I can see endless love in those eyes. Her sweetness and kindness gets me every time. I am terrified of flying, never used to be and not sure why it started but I get very uncomfortable during takeoff slash landing slash turbulence. Every time we fly and I start to tense up she puts her hand on my leg or hand. I feel bad because sometimes I squeeze her fingers pretty good, but it always makes me feel much more at ease. Never have to ask, she's just there to comfort me from my fears. Between the two of us, my wife and I have a lot of functions we attend for work, social, etc. which kind of sucks bc a lot of time we'd rather be at home. When we're at a gathering I don't want to be at and I'm listening to someone or engaging in mindless small talk, my wife will glance over at me and wink. It's a cute acknowledgement of our shared feelings. She makes the bed special. She like puts the sheets upside down so the back of the street and blanket are facing each other. So your body is always on the top of the sheet, even when under the blankets. Also when I'm napping she will do laundry and put the folded clothing on my legs and torso while I nap. I just like it for some reason. Whenever something stressful gets brought up, or I'm going through something, she uses the word we and quat. We will get through this dot and quat. We'll do it together dot and quat. Anytime she makes something about us, instead of about me, I die a little on the inside. Nobody has ever cared. What is a nice guy made of? The avoidance of confrontation. When you ask someone out, you are confronting them with your feelings. And being nice is all about avoiding confrontation. Most people don't want someone who's always wrapped up in a fight, but they'd like you to at least not faint at the first sign of trouble. Plus being nice all the time is boring. People who call themselves nice guys usually aren't that nice emo. Anyone going around thinking about how good they are is a red flag. Most people idea of nice is just never saying anything mean and being polite. That's not my definition of nice that my definition of basic etiquette. I would think of nice as how you think of people internally. A lot of people who call themselves nice are secretly judging people and secretly harboring resentment towards those around them. That is why I define a nice person by someone who is not only nice in their actions but nice in their thoughts. So if you smile at a girl but then think in the back of your mind that she's a, then I don't define you as nice, I define you as fake. A nice guy is a guy who pretends to be nice thinking that makes you owe him. They also agree with everything, afraid that if they don't agree, they won't get it. Instead be a kind guy. Someone who is good to everyone, doesn't matter if you get from them or not. Someone who isn't afraid to ruffle some feathers to make it better in the future. Girls slash women love kind guys, not nice guys.
Not sure, nice guy these days typically means someone who was raised to see social interaction as transactional, or perhaps wasn't particularly patented at all. I'm told I'm an actually nice guy by friends slash family, even people who don't really know me well, but I've been single for three years, and there's no sign of that changing. Maybe that's where it comes from? I sure hope not, I've seen nice guys and heard way too many stories and I'd rather not persist in living if that's who I become. I'm assuming this is the self-proclaimed nice guy in Apos. Really it's a difficult one to answer because the typical nice guy behavior comes out when they're with a partner and being into women it's not the kind of thing you'd see from a guy. But to try to answer the question I'd assume it's going to be dishonesty, a general disregard for other people, manipulative and probably a sprinkle of self-obsession, you're probably better off sending it to a swimmin though as they're normally more exposed to it. You mean a man, a self-proclaimed nice guy is a. A bad boy is just that, a boy, what I assume you mean is a man, someone that knows their worth, takes care of others, controls their temper, and is respected by others. They think unbuttoning your pants at the table is gross? Depends on many things. I did this many times but it's either just the top button, or if it's also the zipper then I make sure to cover myself with my t-shirt or jumper. TBH I don't care if people do it because you shouldn't be able to see anything anyway, especially if girls do it, I'm F. Then again I rarely dine with strangers or people I'm not comfortable around so I don't worry about such things. I wouldn't do this at a work event for example. If I'm by myself, no. If I'm eating with others and my junk pops out, yes. No not at all. People are picky over everything emo if someone needs to undo a button to be more comfortable go for it. Long as no one's flashing their junk we good. Actually, sometimes it's a necessity. High waist jeans make me uncomfortable when I'm eating so, when I'm home, I unbutton and relax. Nevertheless I never do this when I have guests over or when I'm eating out. I do that sometimes, but only if I'm at my grandparents house, and if I have a long hoodie or something. Whether it is or isn't, that's pretty subjective. But using the word gross like that is a pet peeve of mine. Visually gross? The sheer difference between having jeans buttoned or unbuttoned is denim leaning over a little bit. To me, gross means something is literally visually or mentally disgusting. Like the sight of maggots crawling around a dead body. That is gross. Much more than just denim leaning over. My father used to do this in restaurants when we were younger, then forget and stand up like that. Geez it was embarrassing, never really knew if he was just doing it to embarrass us because he was always doing something to embarrass us. I don't really care to be honest, as long as I'm not seeing their undies or their junk, they can do whatever they want to make themselves feel more comfortable. Thinking of it because of this, Thanksgiving coming up, https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch? V equals KRZPMKZH95M. I sometimes drop the first button because high-waisted and full stomach and uncomfy but never do the zipper. Nobody ever noticed. Yeah everyone knows just wear sweatpants or maternity pants. Extra room built in with no buttons required. If it's like they loosen their belt or one button no. Also depends on the people. If it was a friend I would think it was funny. If it was like a sweet grandpa I would think it's endearing. If it's a creepy uncle then I would hate it. What movie do you know line by line? Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That whole movie is filled with memorable quotes. First three Star Wars movies. I'm talking New Hope, Empire, and Jedi. I grew up on them. I remember reading a spoiler in the local paper about Jedi that confirmed Luke and Leia were siblings. I don't remember seeing New Hope but I know we did. I most certainly remember Empire and Jedi. Vader's redemption and Luke cremating him literally left tears in our eyes. How someone so evil throughout the trilogy was so suddenly human. I've watched all three more times than I can count. Burn after reading. The Game, 1997. Midnight Run. Wag the Dog. Sneakers. Planes Trains Automobiles. Traffic, 2000. Marathon Man, 1976. Shrink, 2009. Conan the Barbarian. Granted the first half hour doesn't have a lot of dialogue but I also know all the narrator's lines. Hacker, Half-Baked, a multitude of old Disney movies, Clerks 2, the original Mortal Kombat movie. There's probably more. If I watch something more than a couple times I'll start to be able to recall large sections of movie dialogue. Spaceballs, Transformers, the movie, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, Braveheart, Army of Darkness, The Big Lebowski. Star Wars Ott and the first three Indy Jones movies, I always muse about rather having learned some Shakespeare and Homer lines, but that was the time I grew up in, the beginning of decadence, so to speak. There was a time I could recite the original and prequel Star Wars trilogy almost word for word. Pineapple Express is a classic. Hey, Ted, you killed my brother, Caucasian son of. Suck my. Two times exclamation mark and quat. Shrek, in Latino Spanish. The Little Vampire. Aristocats. Toy Story. Finding Nemo. All the movies my little sister watched over and over again while I was a teenager. The Matrix. We've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. It seems that you've been living two lives. Idiocracy. A co-worker and I were talking about the movie to another co-worker and we were dropping quotes from the movie to each other back and forth. B-movie due to my ex-housemate's baby watching it every hours of every day. And Lord of the Rings trilogy because it's my fave and I've watched it around 60-odd times if not more.